Hello students this is Vikas Mahajan and I welcome all of you in our YouTube channel for the lecture of foundation course FYB com semester 1 chapter number 1 overview of indian society in this lecture we are going to discuss the following points those are 1.1 demographic composition of india 1.2 india as a multicultural and pluralistic society 1.2.1 multi religionism 1.2.2 multilingualism 1.1 demographic composition of india demographic data refers to the characteristics of a human population in a particular geographical region it can be defined as a study of size growth age and geographical distribution of human population with respect to birth death marriage and migrant population India being the second most populous country after China with a population of more than 1.2 billion and the seventh largest in terms of area has a great diversity in its demographic attributes may it be birth rate and death rate fertility and mortality rate literacy sex ratio and child sex ratio poverty per capita income employment levels gender disparity and so on now we shall understand the following table that is 1.1 In this table there are four columns demographic variable national average state with the highest percentage and state with the lowest percentage at first literacy so far as literacy is concerned it is 74.04% in kerala it is 93.91% that is the highest and the lowest is in bihar that is 63.82% second one is poverty the overall poverty in the nation is 26% in the state of orissa it is 45% which is highest and the lowest is in the state of goa which is only 4% the third one is sex ratio the overall sex ratio in the nation is 940 females per 1000 males in the state of kerala it is 1058 as compared to 1000 which is highest and the lowest is in the state of haryana that is only 861 source census of india 2011 now we shall discuss the next point 1.2 India is a multicultural and pluralistic society. The term multiculturalism refers to the appreciation, acceptance or promotion of multiple cultures. Whereas pluralism refers to the existence within a nation or a society of groups distinctive in ethnic origin, cultural patterns, language, religion etc. Pluralism recognizes the existence of different groups at the same time there is an element of equal opportunities or treatment to these groups. In spite of the diversity and multiplicity Indian civilization signifies a certain amount of continuity and confluence This confluence of cultures also brings out a unique feature of unity in diversity In order to comprehend this unique feature it is necessary to understand the multiple stratums of multi-religionism multilingualism and caste diversities in India 1.2.1 multi-religionism India is a cradle of world religions Its ancestors have preached and practiced almost all major religions of the world giving rise to worldly beliefs practices rites rituals ceremonies and institutions The coexistence of all the religions and variety of faiths has been a shining example of religious pluralism and tolerance The principle of secularism in spite of several conflicts and riots has been upheld by our citizens time and again Indian constitution has rightly reflected the idea of multi-religionism It states that every citizen has a right to freely practice, preach, profess and propagate any religion or faith. Secular state has been defined as a state in which all religions and citizens irrespective of their faith would be treated impartially. Unlike its neighboring nations India does not uphold any one religion as the state religion. Apart from the major religions there are several tribal religions coexisting in Indian society. Following are the major religions and the percentage of population belonging to that religion. table 1.2 in this table we will see religions and percentage of population hinduism 80.45% islam 13.43% christianity 2.34% buddhism 1.86% sikhism 0.77% jainism 0.41% zoroastrianism 0.09% and others that is jews etc 0.06% now we shall discuss all religions one by one let's start with Hinduism Hinduism is one of the most ancient religions of India Although followed by majority of population its origin is not owed to any prophet or founder Major Hindu scriptures include Vedas and the holy book is Bhagavad Gita Ramayana Puranas etc Idol worship theory of Purushartha theory of karma doctrine of rebirth are some of the major principle of Hinduism 
They believe in trinity of Brahma creator Vishnu, sustainer, and Mahesh or Shiva destroyer. The theory of Purushartha includes four principles of dharma, duty, artha, material gain, karma, physical pleasure, and moksha, salvation. Hindus are further divided into two sects that is, Shaivism and Vaishism and four castes that is, Brahman, Kshatriyas, Vaishyas and Shudras which are discussed later in the section on caste system in India. Islam, Islam originated in Arabia in around 7th century AD. The term Islam in Arabic means surrender to God. Prophet Muhammad is the founder of this religion. It is a monotheistic religion meaning believes only in one God and that is Allah. Quran is the holy book of Islam. The religion is based on five pillars. They are Allah, believe in only one God, Ramzan, fast in the auspicious month, Hajj, pilgrimage at least once in a lifetime, Namaz, praying five times a day, and Zakat, charity. The major two sects of Islam are Shias and Sunnis. Christianity Christianity is also a monotheistic religion. Bible is the holy book of Christianity. They are further divided into Roman Catholics and Protestants. The major principles of the religion are described in the Ten Commandments. Bible includes the values of humanity, charity, mercy, repentance etc. Sikhism Guru Nanak is the founder of Sikhism. Guru Granth Sahib is the holy book of Sikhs which includes all the hymns and the songs composed by all the ten gurus of Sikhism. Sikhs believe in Satnam, God is the Almighty. A sect in Sikhs who follow Khalsa Pant are known as Singh meaning lion or the protector of religion. They are expected to follow the five Ks. That is, Kesh, Kara, Kanga, Kachar and Kirpan. Jainism. Jainism is a religion based on ethical conduct alone. The 24th Tirthankara was Vardhaman Mahavira who is said to be the founder of Jainism. It is further divided into two sects, Shvetambara and Digambara. Jainism believes in karma but do not believe in caste inequalities. Ahimsa, non-violence, non-stealing, truth, non-possessiveness are some of the values preached by Jainism. Majority of the followers of this religion are found in India. Buddhism. Buddhism is termed as a universal religion. Though found in India, its followers are found all over the world. Gautam Buddha is the founder of Buddhism. They are further divided into Hinayanas and Mahayanas. They believe in eightfold path as the solution to sorrow in life. 1.2.2 Multilingualism. Language is not merely a tool of communication but a means through which cultures are transmitted and spread for generations together. Indian society has been a birthplace to many languages. In fact the major ground on which India was divided in 25 states, now there are 28 states, was language and linguistic diversity. According to the Linguistic Survey of India there are nearly 179 languages and more than 1652 dialects in India. However after the 1961 census, for a smooth data collection purpose only those languages or dialects which are spoken by a population of more than 10,000 were recognized and noted after which the number has now come down to 115 languages. On the basis of the origin, languages in India can be broadly categorized into three groups. They are as follows. A. The Indo-Aryan languages, they cover almost 72% of India's population. They include Hindi, Marathi, Gujarati, Bengali, Oriya, Sindhi, Punjabi, Bihari, Rajasthani, Assamese, Kashmiri and Sanskrit. Majority of the population belonging to this group reside in Northern, Western, Central and Eastern India. B. Dravidian languages, the population from Southern India belong to this group. The major languages are Tamil, Telugu, Kannada and Malayalam. 25% of India's population uses these languages. C. Indo-European languages. Owing to its colonial history English, French and Portuguese are the languages spoken in parts of India. English has been accepted widely as one of the official languages for communication and in higher education. Small parts of Goa, Diu, Daman and Pondicherry comprise of people speaking French or Portuguese. 8th Schedule and Official Languages In the 8th Schedule of Indian Constitution, 22 languages are listed. Post-independence Indian Constitution had listed 15 languages. However after the 71st Amendment of 1992 and 92nd Amendment of 2003, seven more languages were added bringing the total to 22. Now we shall have a look of Table 1.3 Languages in 8th Schedule of Indian Constitution. There are two columns namely, language and percentage of population using it as mother tongue. Hindi 41.03, Bengali 8.11, Telugu 7.19, Marathi 6.99, 
तमिल 5.91, उर्दू 5.01, गुजराती 4.48, कन्नड़ा 3.69, मलयालम 3.21, और 3.21, पंजाबी 2.83, असमीज 1.28, मैथिली 1.18, संथाली 0.63, कश्मीरी 0.54, नेपाली 0.28, सिंधी 0.25, कोंकणी 0.24, डोगरी 0.22, मणिपुरी 0.13, बोडो 0.14 and in the last sanskrit is not a mother tongue of any group source census of india 2001 bilingual policy and the linguistic conflicts in india india has adapted a bilingual policy at the center with hindi as the primary official language and english as the secondary official language according to census records of 2001 41.03% of the population speaks hindi Similarly at the state level the language of the respective state and english is accepted as means of communication however this decision was never an easy task taking into consideration the diversity in the languages in different geographical belts since there is no language defined as official language in indian constitution in 1960s there were attempts to replace hindi for english as the sole official language of india However it witnessed several protests from southern states of Tamil Nadu Kerala Karnataka and others resulting in amendment of official languages act of 1963 It was later known as official languages act used for official purpose of the union rules act 1976 Several state languages are decided as official based on the demography of that state In this way today we have discussed the following points 1.1 demographic composition of India 1.2 India as a multicultural and pluralistic society 1.2.1 multireligionism 1.2.2 multilingualism I hope you might have understood all the points clearly We will meet again in the next lecture Till then take care bye and thank you all